So last lesson, I kind of showed you that this would just give you an indication that you're actually making an array. What if I want to print each one of these words out into the console actually? So there are a few ways to do it, but let me just show you uh, one simple way here. I can actually go in and grab the zeroth location right here. That's actually one way to do it. So I'm saying words at position zero, print that to the console. Let's just try and do this so you can see it. And um, that it's actually running and it's actually working this way. So now it prints out paper. Here we go. Let's just try and go back and now let's try and get um, for the first location like this. Console log, uh, run the console again and now you'll see scissors, etc, etc. But what if I want to print everything inside my array? We can do it in a lot of different ways. Again, there are so many possibilities in the C-sharp language. I'll start up by using a while loop. But in order to do that, we need to know where we want to start and how many we actually want to print. So I need to explain to it, I want to start at position zero, right? So I'll make a local variable here, either with a var keyword or an int keyword, and I'll call it i equals, and then the position where I want to start. Okay, so now I've explained to the system that I want to start at position zero. We'll play with this in a second. So what I'm saying is I'm going to say while i is less than the length of the array. So you need to know there's a length property right here for an array explaining how long the array actually is. So what this says is pretty much as long as the i is less than the length of the array and no, the length is not 2, it's actually 3. 1, 2, 3, right? So as long as the value is less than 3, then you can actually print something. And what I want to print is now pretty much the same thing as before. I'll do a console write line like this. And then what I want to print is the words i position. So I want position i, right? And in this case, i will start out being 0. And then each time we printed a word, we want to add one to i. Notice that i++ is actually the same as me writing equals i plus 1. So I'm just adding 1 to the i. But again, to make this shorter, I could actually just write i++. Let me just outcome in this guy like this, and I'll just do i++ below. Then you guys can see kind of both ways of doing it. This is just to make it easier to do, right? So I'll just add one to i, and I'll do that every time I pass through the loop. I'll print the current word, for instance, zero. I'll add one, go back, print the word, add one, blah, blah, blah. So let's try and run this with the debugger so you guys can see what's actually going to happen. Next lesson I'll show you with the for loop, so it's, it'll be a bit easier. But right now, i is zero. So I'll step over here, the first one. I'll print to the console the first word, which is paper. I'll go back and I'll add one to i. The loop asks, is i less, which now is one, right? So if you see here, i is actually one now. I just mouse over again. Is that less than what the actual length is? And the length is actually three right now because I have three different strings inside this uh, array right here. So let's try and step over again. I'll go and write stuff to the console. So now it says the second guy in the list, which is scissors and I'll add one to i again. I'll go back, I'll start again, etc, etc. And now the length is actually 3. 3 is not less than 3, it's the same. I hope that makes sense. So I'll go out of the loop now and I'll just press continue and this is what I'll print all the three terms here, paper, scissors, rock. So now you know how to do this in a while loop. We'll work more with arrays and loops in a second.